Hi there, welcome to our third broadcast from Kangaroo Island. Live from Kangaroo Island, we are out at Pelican Lagoon. And just as a reminder where Kangaroo Island is, for those of you who haven't tuned in before, we'll just put, put a map up and show the location. We're on the southern part of the Australian continent off the south coast, about 20 minutes flight from Adelaide. The location we're at, Pelican Lagoon, it's about the narrowest part of the island, only about a mile across here. And uh, this is former sheep farming country, which is slowly, slowly growing back. And uh, it's now a good spot for us to uh, to see kangaroos. And uh, as you can see here, the, uh, the kangaroos are largely in pairs, a big one, a little one, that's a mum and last year's Joey and she's probably got a little one in the pouch and I'll talk about that more later. The kangaroo and kangaroos are related to the western grey kangaroo of the mainland but they look very very different here. They're a dark chocolate brown with black points so their ears, their muzzle, the tips of their tail um, are all black and the rest of them are sort of fairly uniform chocolate brown. You do, do get a little bit of variation, some lighter, some darker, but they're, they're usually pretty chocolatey. They've got a thick coat, which uh, gets them through uh, a cool but not real cold winter. And their ears, compared to the mainland, their ears are much shorter, probably 25, 30% smaller than the ears of the, uh, the roos on the mainland. And that's probably because we don't get the extended hot periods here relative to the adjacent mainland, so they don't need the big radiators uh, on their ears. The, uh, the other difference with the kangaroo island kangaroos is the actual size of them in terms of uh, overall height. Their femur, their thigh bone, is again about 30% shorter than that of animals just only 10 miles away, you know, 15, 16 k's away across the, uh, the strait that separates us from the mainland. Any roos there are going to be for the same weight, are going to be larger. The kangaroo, island kangaroo, is actually the biggest roo that's ever been measured, not by, by height, the reds are in the outback are, are the tallest, but these ones are the, uh, the heaviest in terms of their mass. Like um, all marsupials, the uh, little joeys are born really, really premature when you compare them to placental mammals like us. They're the size of a jelly bean when they're born, only a matter of about 34, 36 days after mating. And then the little joey will crawl arm over arm. They're very, very... Uh, um, poorly developed at this stage, their hind legs are not developed, their tail, their eyes are closed, their ears aren't obvious, and they crawl arm over arm into the pouch, attach permanently to a nipple, and then they do their secondary development in the, uh, the humidity crib, which is the, uh, the kangaroo's pouch. And this is warm, moist, and dark, so it's a, uh, you know, a perfect little spot for them to develop. It's also a perfect spot for uh, other things like uh, bacteria and and Blair's just going to pan across here. They're moving across the landscape. It's a group of three there. Looks like a female last year's young and maybe a, a young male going with them. So their behaviour is a bit like deer. I'll get back to the, uh, the development of them in a moment, but it's a bit like deer in that they'll, um, during the day, they'll hide out in the bush yeah, or in the woods in uh, the case of those of you who have deer, and uh, then they'll come out to graze either early morning or in the afternoon. It's a really funny way to get around that bouncing business.
when they're when they're hopping, it's a really really inefficient way to get around when they start to hop. Uh, but once they start, it's actually a really um, their efficiency increases the faster they go. So their Achilles tendon is probably you know a quarter of an inch across. So about a what's that? Just under a half a centimeter. And they store energy in that, almost like the uh, you know the, the old pogo stick. And uh, and also when they're hopping, they're uh, as they rise up, their uh, all their gut comes up and pushes air out of their lungs. And when they land, uh, that movement coming down uh, pulls air into their into their lungs. So you know, for us to breathe, we're you know, expending energy on you know, pulling our diaphragm down, opening up our intercostal muscles for the ruse once they're hopping. They actually uh, become quite, uh, quite efficient at, uh, at moving. Blair's just gonna spin, spin around here and see if there's another one out behind us. So we're out in the middle of uh, quite a big plain. There's, there's roos pretty much in every direction, but they're just all uh, all on the move, out, out having a, a bit of a feed. This one's a male, I reckon. He's just having a little bit of a look. Might be another one back behind, he's looking back over his shoulder there a bit. So what I was saying about the uh, conditions in the pouch, being warm, moist, dark, it's perfect uh, place for fungus or bacteria to develop. So hygiene is really, really important. So you often see the mums with their nose in the pouch doing the housework and making sure the kids have uh, kept, their, kept their room tidy. And, uh, and I don't know if there's any been any work being done with kangaroos, but certainly with the Tamar wallabies, which we're going to try and uh, do a piece on the, the Tamar wallabies uh, coming up. They've isolated a protein in the Tamar wallaby milk, which is oh, got some more kangaroos coming down. Out of the three, they're coming down on the left. There, let's see if you can get round on them. Sorry for the wobbles, but we've just got some a few more coming down out of the bush there. So it's just bouncing across the uh, the plains out to our left. Good work there, keep you on him, on her rather. female quite curious checking us out just had one of the neighbors drive past you might have heard a car very unusual for us to get traffic out here See when she's moving slowly there on all five, so she takes her weight on her four paws and her tail, and then bring the uh, bring the back feet up. So they go on all fives when they're going slowly, and their tail can actually take bare weight at just on the tip or halfway down or towards the base. So it's a it's a leg that can be of different different lengths depending on what their requirements are. So if they're reaching up high to get onto a something tasty in a bush they'll uh, they'll just use the tip and the, the tip of their toes and they'll be able to you know, reach up quite a bit higher than they they would at a relaxed pose like this one is here now so I was saying about the uh, the, the wallaby milk there's a, a protein that's been isolated in the, in the Tamar wallaby milk which is about uh, 
I think it's subject to some uh, research now and see whether they can synthesize it because it's been found to be far more effective on a lot of uh, pathogens than penicillin is. So uh, yeah, it's amazing, these all these things that we don't know about nature. That call we can uh, hear in the background is the Australian magpie too, just that uh, classic early morning sound. The kangaroo's quite, oh, she's on the move. going straight back into the sunshine make it hard for us to film there's some more out to the right Blair that's going to get right behind the camera the other camera there up on the edge of the bush there there's another group and a big boy moving down there Same before the, the the roos are quite dexterous with their their four paws. They might be smaller than their uh, their hind limbs, but they're um, they're able to to grasp onto things and and hold stuff. They'll, so they'll reach up and grab a branch. Uh, one we saw earlier, um, she was just grabbing some of the leaves there and chewing on some of the seed pods with the uh, the Lincoln weed. That's uh, this little bush that's surrounding us here. The roos are, in terms of their um, digestive system, they are, um, they, they're not like a ruminant, like a cow with the four chambers, but the, um, the intestine, if you imagine the way a child would draw a cloud with you know, lots of little, uh, little billowing pockets, um, that's exactly what it's like. So there's a lot of fermentation goes on in the, uh, inside the, uh, oh, we've got some roos moving through. coming straight for us. It's quite likely that the um, the kangaroo numbers on Kangaroo Island, there's another one coming out the back there, are greater than uh, they would have been at the time of European contact because of the development of, of pasture where we've got this combination and, and exactly where we are now is a good um, Good example of this where you've got bush in the background there where they can snooze during the uh, the day or rest up if it's if it's hot and then they can move out onto the pasture so all this grassland which has been developed for the uh, for the sheep is uh, is really beneficial for the uh, the kangaroos so we get quite a collection coming here they're starting to move down and and feed head down bum up very busy too fussed about us being here. So he's trying to center these, uh, this image. And you can see in the uh, immediate foreground here, this a lot of limestone here. We're not very far from the south coast, so all this country used to be sand dunes. So the entire place is uh, is really you know, covered with uh, limestone, which makes it a bit tough as a place to farm, which is pretty much why it's been uh, let, left for the kangaroos down. A bit hard to make a living as a as a sheep farmer here.
You can see that the kangaroo there just grabbing onto the branch there with their four paws and having a bit of a feed. Being in the early uh, early autumn or the fall here, it's uh, it's pretty much the end of the the longest dry period we have on the island. So the landscape's pretty uh, pretty parched. There's not a whole lot of feed. So they're coming out to pick the uh, Lincoln weed, which is related to rocket, or what, that's what we call arugula. And uh, you can actually smell it when you walk around here. That's a really classic, uh, you know, bitter smell with the uh, from the arugula so that's what they're, they're nibbling on and hopefully over the next um, two to four weeks we'll get some decent rains and this whole landscape will green up and it'll, it'll increase the, uh, the amount of feed available for for everybody for the uh, the roos wallabies possums and obviously all of our sheep and cattle as well across the uh, across the island because we get about half of our income on Kangaroo Island from agriculture and, and fishing and the other half from, from tourism. This group's not that far away from us, so uh, she's obviously very curious and just wondering what we're doing here. Normally there's no one here in the mornings. Well, I think we might uh, we might wrap it up now, and please remember to tune in next week and share this with uh, with any of your friends. Or oh, we've got another roo bouncing across fast here. Um, share the uh, the site with with any friends that you might have who you think might be interested. Uh, appreciate your time tuning in, and uh, we look forward to catching up again next week. There's uh, one nice roux just to finish off on.